Hi, this is a video from HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to be doing a correlation matrix uh, in SPSS. And I'm going to show you how to do it in such a way that it's uh, very nearly ready to input into a Word document so that you can create a manuscript that's uh, nearly ready to be either published in a, a journal or just generating a report more generally. So what I have here are my data. Uh, these are real data. They just happen to be based on the discount premiums uh, associated with some listed investment companies. Um, doesn't matter what the data are. It's always the same process. I think I've got a total of something like nine variables that I'll be factor analy uh, reducing into a correlation matrix. So typically when you do a correlation matrix in, in SPSS, at least, especially when you're just a beginner, uh, you'll probably go into something like correlate and then bivariate. And I've already got the data inputted. What you'd be seeing if you haven't done this before is this. And you would click your variables that you want to produce a correlation matrix for. And you click on OK. Let me reduce the size of this so that it can go into the Camtasia window viewer. Uh, so what you'd have is a correlation matrix that looks something like this, which includes both the sample size associated with uh, each correlation, as well as the statistical significance. Now this is informative, but it's not really the way you would pu uh, put a table in a manuscript. Uh, for publication or a report. It's just too much redundancy in this and it's too large. So an alternative way of creating the correlation matrix, correlation matrix so it's not as big is to create one that doesn't have all that information. And again, I've, I've just done this analysis so uh, this isn't what it would look like, but this is what you would have in your data set and you would just click the variables that you want to include in the correlation matrix, you go into statistics, and you make sure that this option here is, is select inter-item correlations. Now, what I'm in is the scale uh, analysis in SPSS to do a Cronbach's alpha reliability analysis. And I'm not interested in that. I just want to create the correlation matrix as well as the means and standard deviations so that I can get a near-ready manuscript correlation manuscript level correlation matrix. So mm -hmm. click on continue. You can also do this through the data reduction factor analysis utility. It'll give you the same uh, type of format. And what I'm pointing what I'm referring to exactly is this correlation matrix right here. This is the same correlation matrix that I produced initially, but it is uh, in existence in the absence of the sample size and the statistical significance information. So this is a much more compact, near manuscript ready correlation matrix. And I can push it even further. Uh, typically you report correlation matrix to the second decimal place. And we can change that in SPSS very easily by clicking that. And we can center it even, table properties, center. So now we've got a correlation matrix that's been centered. And now I want to create, I've just actually finished that, so I'm going to create it, the same thing, what I just did there. I'm going to put this into, well, you probably can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to actually put the page set up so that it's in the viewer box. Oops. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's about right. I'm going to change my um, page setup to landscape. The correlation matrix is just barely too big to include in um, portrait. So to include this correlation matrix in the manuscript, now that it's very near the um, ready, just click on Edit Copy after selecting it, and then Edit Paste. And there you go. you got the correlation matrix looking just like it was in the output for SPSS. I'm going to delete that top row because I don't need it. I'm also going to change the bordering on the table so that it doesn't have anything because that bordering that SPSS does automatically is not what you would produce in a manuscript. But what you could do is then change it so that 
you at least have these lines, which is closer to what you might include in a report. All right. Now, you would also delete this information because it's redundant. These correlation correlations on both sides of the um, symmetric correlation matrix. They're identical, so most people delete that, and I do too. Oops. So this is very near what you would produce. You might include a title, table one. Uh, let's get, uh, yeah, it's a listed investment company, intercorrelation and descriptive statistics and I say descriptive statistics because I'm also going to add the means and standard deviations associated with these whoops variables so column to the right and insert column to the right so what I've got here so far is the correlation matrix and I'm gonna put that all into times new and Roman and font of 10, which is a bit small, but you can make it bigger if you wanted to. And what I'm going to include at the end here, because I've got the correlation matrix, looks good. Put in mean and standard deviations. And again, you would typically do that in any report. And you get that information right here in the SPSS output, just above the correlation matrix. Cell properties, I want to reduce that to 2. Apply. Click OK. Uh, I suppose you could center that if you wanted to. You could do that in, in Word just as easily, but I'll do it here. Center. OK, so now I'm going to take this mean and standard deviation table, and I'm going to paste it into my Word document. And I'm literally just going to copy these within the table. And then I'm going to input them in the table here. And it's precisely in the same order and format as the correlation matrix. And so now I could delete that. So it doesn't quite show up uh, in the, it's a little bit too small. I guess I could make this a bit smaller, uh, 88. I don't know how well that's going to show up in the video. But basically, I've got my correlation matrix with the addition of the means and standard deviations and then I can add a note at the bottom n equals this is based on 80, 86 data points and correlations greater than 0.21 are statistically significant I just happen to know that because I looked at the other table that I originally produced and let's see how that looks in a 11 point font yeah it's a bit better and then you would just save your table. But this is how simple it is to create a table like this um, in manuscript-ready form from SPSS. And I have to say that looking at other stats packages, it is not this easy to do that, mostly because the other stats packages produce output in a very basic text output format. And you're having to either print the page out, print the output, and then hand input the information, or printing it into a text or saving the file as a text format and then importing into Excel anyway it's a it's a it's a headache but with SPSS in my opinion this is one of the quickest ways to create a good looking table a correlation table with your means and standard deviations and thank you for watching